So we're going to start off today by talking about synchronous and asynchronous operations. We'll first begin by talking about synchronous operations, and you'll see how this all fits together with the motivation for the Java Completable Futures Framework. So the first thing to note is what is synchrony and what are synchronous operations? And we'll see that they're about having threads coordinate by blocking in order to be able to do certain operations. Method calls in Java programs, especially the ones that you've been dealing with most of the time you've been programming in Java, and for that matter, most of the time you've been programming in general, are largely synchronous. These would include things like calls on Java collections, behaviors in Java stream aggregate operations, unless you do other things that we'll talk about later. What happens here is that the callee, which is the thing that's called, borrows the thread of control from the caller until the callee is finished doing its computation or computations. So notice here that I'm showing a visualization of this where we have this request response nature of calls where you make a call, for example, to do a blocking download. The caller blocks until the callee is done. The callee returns the result. The caller makes another call. And these are very classic examples of two-way synchronous interactions. Here's an example from the Image Stream Gang case study. We, we haven't really talked about this in great detail, but we'll cover it later when we talk about some of the behaviors of Java Completable Futures. You can see here that we're having these calls doing things like blocking downloads, and they block the calling thread until things are done. Now, the way that this works in a context of parallel streams is there's a bunch of different threads that are running to do all this work, but each thread is blocking synchronously. Here's an example of what the code might look like to do this. You can see here that we're going to call the blocking download method, which is passed as a method reference, as a behavior. And in this particular case, we're going to transform an image by downloading each image using its URL. And you can see we use the call and manage blocker method here, which as we've seen before, will ensure that there's extra threads in the common fork join pool to avoid running out of threads when calls are blocking. So this is all stuff that we've talked about before. Okay, so that was just a quick overview of synchrony and synchronous operations. Of course, what we're going to do now is talk in more detail about how this stuff gets used in what some of the pros and cons of this approach are. So now that you've seen a bit about what synchrony does and sort of how it's used, let's talk about the pros and cons of using synchrony. So first, we'll start off with the good parts. A synchronous model, a model that it uses synchronous processing is generally intuitive to program and debug. Why? Because you've been doing this for your whole life. It also maps on to common two-way method patterns that, again, you've used forever. And another nice thing is that the local state of the caller is retained in the activation record of the calling method so that when the callee returns, the callee is able to access its state as it was when the call was made. And if you've ever taken a compiler construction course, you, you know how this works. But in a nutshell, here's an example. Here is the download content method. You can see it has some local variables like buff and OS for output stream and IS for input stream and bytes and so on and so forth. You can see all these, these variables are part of the runtime stack of the download content method. And when method calls are made to things like reading and writing or open stream, the state of these local variables is maintained such that when the call returns, the state is there and they can pick up from where they left off. So this is just, again, very, very canonical, very intuitive patterns for doing this type of programming. Let's talk about the cons of synchrony. So we saw some pros, let's talk about some cons. So one of the key problems is that if you use synchronous programming, it may not leverage all the parallelism that's available in multi-core systems. So if we've got lots of cores, but only a few threads are able to make progress because they're blocking, all the other ones are blocking, then we have a problem. And in general, there's a whole slew of issues with using threads in synchronous code. By the way, I had fun with Dali this weekend. I, I generated this, this particular visualization by saying, please generate me a group of dogs that are all eating from their own bowls in a nice orderly way. That's what you'd like to have happen. And then I said, please generate a scrum of dogs that are eating out of each other's bowls in a chaotic way. And I thought this was a pretty funny visualization of the, the contrast between 
way threads work in theory and the way they work in practice, if you're not careful. So there can be overheads, there can be complexities, and so on and so forth when you start trying to use blocking. Another problem is selecting the right number of threads to have in your pool. So as you can see here, when we used the download image approach, we have a couple of different approaches to do this. One way is to allocate a large number of threads, for example, by using the, the mechanism in Java where you can give a property that will set the number of threads that are used for parallel streams. But if you have a large number of threads, then you're wasting resources. If you have a too small number of threads, then you may conserve resources, but you'll end up having the performance not be very good. Of course, the right answer here is to use managed blocker, but the point still remains that this is a little tricky to get the number of threads right, especially for I.O. bound programs that need more threads than there are cores in order to run efficiently due to blocking of those threads. And if people don't understand the managed blocker stuff, then they will often do things incorrectly. Another issue is changing the size of the common fork join pool by making it bigger or smaller. And again, you can do it by setting the system property or by using managed blockers. E either way is, uh, well, managed blockers are the way to go. You can use the other approach, but it requires more knowledge about exactly how your program works. So that's a summary of the pros and cons of synchrony. Bottom line, synchronous programming is more intuitive, but until we had features like Java virtual threads, it was deemed to be rather costly and therefore there were some complexities associated with using it in more traditional but modern Java programs. Very modern Java addresses this issue, but that's outside the scope of what we're talking about here.